MMC Bovis is probably the second best beef based transformer in the world. After this one. <laughs> Greetings fans, hyper fans, and people just lost looking for videos of cats on YouTube. Tantrum, aka MMC Bovis, is pretty much an exact clone of Fortis. Same size, same transformation, practically the same everything. Apart from the colours, the only three major differences are the chest panel here is remoulded, the face looks slightly more grumpy, and if I can push that up and in, he has a stonking big cow head, meaning he should either be defending some Greek labyrinth or riding with the cowboys of Moo Mesa. The other thing I have to say about this chap is, I don't know if the camera is picking it up or not, but he has come in covered in a white, really powdery substance, um, which feels like that dry residue that you get on stuff you've just super glued. So I don't know if that's mould release agent, or whether he's just picked up some dirty habits, and I should be glad that he hasn't got a crisp packet stuck to his nose. As with everybody else, he comes with a set of guns, again exceptionally thin. A pair of knives on some rather mean looking knuckle dusters. And also like Fortis, he comes with the foot cannon. These big cannons do a pretty poor job of disguising the fact that what they are is a big foot with a fist on it. Uh, separating them off is pretty easy. Just pop this little ridge out from the front and work it out of the hole there. The hand, I have to say, is a little bit disappointing. When you have a look at MMC's original, these were individual fingers, all jointed at the knuckles. And what we have here is a single hollow moulded piece of plastic, um, which basically just has pins there and there holding the whole thing together. On the plus side, it means that if you end up being sent two with left fists or two with right fists, it's not a big deal to change them, to pop the thumb out of the ball joint and move it over to the other side. That's literally the only difference. So, all pretty much as hollow as you can imagine. And the in-between leg peg ready to go into an arm mode, which we will talk about when we get on to Predator King. The foot stands up a little bit better. MMC breaking away from the tradition of just plugging the bot straight in and instead having this rather weird snake-like piece which is actually a hollow ball in a very tight socket which gives you all of your ankle movement. The idea is that you put your figure together clamping those between its legs and having another tiny little brace there just to support it a bit. No sign of the friction kit that MMC produced, but considering that it was just a couple of rubber bumpers, you can pick those up from any hardware store, and the size and weight of this guy means he's not going to be scooting along the table. Uh, I mean, this moves about as well as a Dalek on a gravel beach, so I really don't feel that stability is going to be a problem. So with all the blades, boots and bits looked at, let's get back to the meat of the review and look at Bovis as a bull. In Bison mode, Bovis still has a lot of the same problems. I still think that the head looks absolutely massive compared to the body. And he has the same issue as Fortis with the fact that even though his mouth will open, 
it does just reveal a very grumpy flat robot face. Turning the torso over really does make them look like two very different moulds. And the colour variance really adds to that. Still has a lot of black paint decals. There's rather large patches of grey here that help break up the orange. Having the lighter coloured legs really does make the body look stockier than the Rhino. Using the same mould for both of these solves the problem that the original G1 toy had where the toy was ever so slightly off balance. Whilst Fortis comes with two nice big chunky cannons, these very thin little blasters that Bovis comes with really seem to be a little bit too small for the toy. Not that that's going to be a massive problem, because they do all integrate into Predator King's weapon. We're over halfway through Predacon week. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the button below, give my video the thumbs up, leave me a comment, and I'll see you tomorrow. Well that was a little on the short side, wasn't it? Should we have a sneaky peek at one of the King's weapons? Here we have the guns from all five Predacons. We have Fortis's huge cannons, the tiny little guns I've just shown you for Bovis. We've got Tigress's pistols, the huge cannon from Leo Ducks, and this is the sniper rifle from Talon. So we'll take the two that we've got only one of, put those on each side. We'll start by taking Bovis's guns, collapsing those down, and these pieces are on turns, so you can actually put them together and make sure that they line up properly. Split them off again, spin this huge gun round, and they have little pegs on the back which just slide there and there. Now the most irritating ones are actually Bovis's tiny little things which are to go in here but these little pieces are supposed to go in here. Um, this is one of the problems when you upscale things, if you don't upscale everything to exactly the right scale, these extra things don't work. You can just about squeeze them in. But it does take a lot of finagling to get it there perfectly. Luckily these are quite a soft plastic so you're not really worrying that they're going to shatter on you. These guns go in here with the side clips going into that cavity there. All that remains now is to put the sniper rifle into that hole at the top and extend that cannon. So there we have a nice heavy duty blaster. Um, you can just about get one of the individual bots to hold that but it's actually these two pegs on the side that let you line it up with the slots in the feet that are now on the forearms. And securely hold that arm cannon in place. Nice!